history proves that all dictatorships, all authoritarian forms of government are trenchant. Only democratic systems are not trenchant. Whatever the shortcomings, mankind has not devised anything superior. Anyone who doesn't regret the passing of the Soviet Union has no heart. Anyone who wants it restored has no brains. Russia is a part of European culture. Therefore, it is with difficulty that I imagine NATO as an enemy. Nobody and nothing will stop Russia on the road to strengthening democracy and ensuring human rights and freedoms. Our aims are absolutely clear. They are a high living standard in the country and a secure, free and comfortable life. The path towards a free society has not been simple. There are tragic and glorious pages in our history. To pay more is the easy way. In fact, the solution possibilities to the problem are many. You must obey the law always, not only when they grab you by your special place. Terrorism has once again shown it is prepared deliberately to stop at nothing in creating human victims. An end must be put to this. As never before, it is vital to unite forces of the entire world community against terror. Russia does not have in its possession any trust or the data that supports the existence of nuclear weapons or any weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and we have not received any such information from our partners as yet. I see that not everyone in the West has understood that the Soviet Union has disappeared from the political map of the world, and that a new country has emerged with new humanist and ideological principles at the foundation of its existence. Whoever does not miss the Soviet Union has no heart. Whoever wants it back has no brain. Indeed, Russia and the US were allies during the two tragic conflicts of the Second and the First World Wars which allows us to think there's something objectively bringing us together in difficult times. And I think, I believe, it has to do with geopolitical interests and also has a moral component. I believe that the presidential term should be limited. Stalin is the most popular figure in all of Russia. If one looks at the map of the world, it's difficult to find Iraq, and one would think it rather easy to subdue such a small country. Stalinism is linked with a cult of personality and massive violations of the law with repression and camps. There is nothing like that in Russia and, I hope, will never again be. I'm sure corruption in Chechnya is minimal. Our society, including the liberals, must understand that there must be order. I am the wealthiest man, not just in Europe, but in the whole world. I collect emotions. I am wealthy in that the people of Russia have twice entrusted me with the leadership of a great nation such as Russia. I believe that is my greatest wealth. For Russia, there is not, 
and there may not be another political option but democracy. However, Russian democracy is not at all the realization of standards imposed on us from outside. The United Nations founders understood that decisions affecting war and peace should happen only by consensus and with America's consent. The veto by Security Council permanent members was enshrined in the United Nations Charter. The profound wisdom of this has underpinned the stability of international relations for decades. We need to use the United Nations Security Council and believe that preserving law and order in today's complex and turbulent world is one of the few ways to keep international relations from sliding into chaos. The law is still the law, and we must follow it whether we like it or not. Chechnya is part and parcel of the Russian Federation. In 1995, Russia virtually gave Chechnya de facto statehood and independence even though, de jure, it didn't recognize Chechnya as an independent state. And I would like to emphasize strongly that Russia withdrew all of its troops. We moved the prosecutors. We moved all the police. Dismantled all the courts completely, 100%. I go to the gym, I swim daily, and from time to time I meet with friends and do extracurricular stuff. Economic activity is moving from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Russia has a certain natural advantage because it also borders the Pacific Ocean. It's a historical phenomenon that into 50 years, a nation could move from a colony into the most prosperous nation of the world and the leader of the world. It is indeed an achievement a tribute to the talent of the American nation, the American people, and an optimal political and economic system. I was brought up in a very ordinary family, in fact, a worker's family. Both my father and mother were ordinary citizens, Russia needs a strong state power and must have it. But I am not calling for totalitarianism. Russia will not soon become, if it ever becomes, a second copy of the United States or England, where liberal value have deep historic roots. No references to the need to fight terror can be an argument for restricting human rights. Nobody should pin their hopes on a miracle. The democratic choice Russian people made in the early 90s is final. The strengthening of our statehood eyes, at times, deliberately interpreted as authoritarianism. We shall fight against them, throw them in prisons, and destroy them. I think the American people should express their preferences, and we'll accept their choice. We don't need a weak and government, but a strong government that would take responsibility for the rights of the individual and care for the society as a whole. Yes, life in Chechnya so far looks more like a life after a natural disaster. Russia does not want confrontation of any kind. 
and we will not take part in any kind of holy alliance. Political activities in Russia should be as transparent as possible. Financing political activities from abroad is something the state should keep an eye on. The ability to compromise is not a diplomatic politeness toward a partner but rather taking into account and respecting your partner's legitimate interests. I believe the U.S. already understands and will understand more and more that only a strong Russia will respond to the genuine interests of the United States. Radicals can be found in any environment. Iraq is a small but very proud nation. I'm eternally grateful to fate and the citizens of Russia that they've trusted me to be the head of the Russian government. Those who fight corruption should be clean themselves. Terrorists are always a threat to someone. If we'll be scared of them, it means they have won. How can a bureaucrat or a politician be trusted if he says loud words for the sake of Russia's good while trying to take his funds, his money abroad? President Obama hasn't been elected by the American people in order to be pleasant to Russia. No one wants the United Nations to suffer the fate of the League of Nations, which collapsed because it lacked real leverage. This is possible if influential countries bypass the United Nations and take military action without Security Council authorization. No one doubts that poison gas was used in Syria but there is every reason to believe it was used, not by the Syrian army, but by opposition forces to provoke intervention by their powerful foreign patrons, who would be siding with the fundamentalists. The Chechnya problem is a centuries-old problem. The thing is that today, fundamentalists and terrorists are exploiting those centuries-old problems to accomplish their own objectives that have nothing to do whatsoever with the interests of Chechnya. I love the Russian classics very much, the Russian classical literature. But I also read modern literature. As far as Russian literature is concerned, I am very fond of Tolstoy and Chekhov, and I also enjoy reading Gogol very much. I would prefer to abandon the terminology of the past. Superpower is something which we used during the Cold War time. Why use it now? Russia is opposed to the proliferation of mass destruction weapons, including nuclear weapons, and in this context we call upon our Iranian friends to abandon the uranium enrichment program. I think every person should have some faith inside him, in his heart. What matters is not an external display of this faith, but the inner state of the soul. I read papers, try to watch news programs on television, but, as a rule, record it. During the day I have no time for that, so I watch something taped. As for the newspapers, I try to get through them every day. Additionally, of course, I look through news bulletins. 
My English is very bad. Journalism, as concerns collecting information, differs little if at all from intelligence work. In my judgment, a journalist's job is very interesting. 